I read Why We Sleep and I've listened to a bunch of podcast episodes about this, but I'd just love to get your take on a few <laughs> of these like frequently asked questions about yeah. sleep. The first one that comes to mind is six hours, seven hours, eight hours, nine hours. What What's going on there? <laughs> I think the key thing for me is that one shoe size doesn't fit all. And uh, one of the sort of slight frustrations that, that's emerged is that an average value is taken as the optimum value for all of us. And of course it isn't. Across adults, for example, healthy sleep can range from six hours, maybe slightly less than that, um, out to 10 or 11 hours. And so Yes, there is an average, but actually there's so much individual variation. It's really, I think, wrong to impose a specific amount for each of us. And the point of the book, to some extent, is to allow people to define what's optimal for them. How do we do that? Uh, how do you do that? So, <laughs> yeah. so how do you know if you're not getting enough sleep? Well, it's, you know, it's the kind of things our grandparents probably would have told us if yeah. asked that question, which is that, do you need a partner or an alarm clock to wake you up in the morning? Does it take you a long time to wake up? Do you crave caffeinated and sugar-rich drinks during the day to keep you awake? Have your friends, family, colleagues reported that you're showing a lack of empathy, increased frustration? They may have noticed that you do stupid and unreflective things. And when given the opportunity to sleep, let's say at the weekend and very notably on holiday, do you find your sleep patterns change? And it's really defining what each of us needs and then trying to adopt behaviors that defend that sleep pattern. And, you know, we know, for example, that the duration of sleep varies enormously between individuals. But not only that, their timing, going back to the molecular clock, uh, there are subtle changes which can make you a morning person or an evening person. But also going, going back to light, that can contribute to what's called your chronotype, your morningness and eveningness. So morning light advances the clock, make you, makes you get up earlier. Evening light delays the clock, makes you get up later and go to bed later. So our sleep timing is dependent upon our genetics uh, and when we see light. But also there's another factor, which is how old we are. So from about the age of 10, there's a tendency to want to go to bed later and later and later. Peaks in lateness in males about 21, 21 and a half. In females, about 19. So men tend to be later for longer. And then as we age, we sort of move to a more morning chronotype. The time we're in our late 50s, early 60s, we're getting up and going to bed at about the time we got up and went to bed when we were 10. And that actually change almost perfectly correlates with the changing levels of estrogen and testosterone. So that sharp rise during puberty and then the sort of decline in, into old age. So the point I'm making is that not only is there lots of differences between individuals in terms of their, their preference for how long they want to sleep and when they want to sleep, but it changes yeah. as we age. Therefore, it's completely daft to try and define the optimum sleep duration. You must get eight hours. I think it was kicking back against that, which was one of the reasons for writing the book. Hey friends, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this clip, then click here for the full unedited episode. And if you like that, then do please consider subscribing to the channel. It means a lot. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.